In this lecture, we're going to look at the slope of the indifference curve. Why it has that particular slope and with that particular slope, what it tells us about the individual and his or her choices between the two products that he is trading off. Along any line, the trade-off between whatever you're measuring on the vertical axis against what you're measuring on the horizontal axis is the change. We measure it in microeconomics one as an elasticity. Um, in this case here, the trade-off between vegetables and meat is measured along the indifference curve. So the rate at which the consumer is prepared to sacrifice a small quantity of one good, in this case vegetables, in order to get a little more of another good, in this case meat, is the slope of the indifference curve. And you'll see that along the any indifference curve which you may draw, the rate at which a consumer is prepared to sacrifice one good for another good changes as you move along the indifference curve. When you have lots of vegetables, for example at point A, you have lots of vegetables and a little bit of meat, you are prepared to give up many more vegetables in order to get a small amount of meat. Whereas at a point such as B here, you have lots of meat and very little vegetable, and so you are prepared to give up very much less vegetable in order to get extra meat. It's a trade-off. So the slope of the curve tells us the rate at which a consumer is prepared to trade off one good against another good. And that trade-off is known as the marginal rate of substitution. Marginal meaning a small change or a one change in whatever you are measuring. So a small change, the rate of change of substitution. And substitution in this case is veggies for meat or vice versa. And so all the way along this indifference curve, we measure the marginal rate of substitution. And what should be evident to you is that all the way along the indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution changes.